Entrepreneurs and small business owners, are you feeling overwhelmed by lack of capital, growth challenges, or personal branding? You are not alone. UCS Advisors is here for you. We're professional capital raising advisors committed to helping you secure funding and grow your business. Are you ready to impress investors? Check your investor readiness with our free 45 second quiz at ucsquiz.com. We believe in you. Visit ucsquiz.com and start your success journey. And remember, always be willing to achieve your greatness. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Cam. We are here in Atlantic City, New Jersey today at Tennessee Ave Beer Hall with Sarah Colazzo and Charlie Sorth. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, it's a beautiful day here in Atlantic City. It was a little too beautiful. I'm sweating. I'm <laughs> pouring sweat. I don't know if you could tell. I'm under this shirt, just all the juices. Um, I was a little bit worried because this morning I woke up in the hotel and it was like thundering and lighting. And I was like, oh, it's going to kind of suck to... So I never actually sat out here. I came yesterday. There was like a private event going on. Yeah. But it's cool back here. Like you got the murals and all that kind of stuff. And I just think it's a cool vibe. The fire pit is my favorite spot to sit in the entire city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. The end of the night, 630. I say a lot too because there are some cool places to sit mm -hmm. in Atlantic City. Yeah, especially on the weekends with the live entertainment. You sit by the fire pit and you, you know, have a beer, get something to eat and watch the bands play. It's uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so let's let's learn a little bit about what you guys do, um, and then we'll learn about the beer hall and and all that uh, kind of as we progress throughout the whole episode. So, Sarah, we'll talk. We'll start with you, just because you were the one that was kind of spearheading this through the email uh, chain that we had. Um, so, tell me a little bit about uh, what you do uh, in relation to the Tennessee Ave Beer Hall. So, I am the director of marketing. Um, we. Are, we coin ourselves as the most exciting beach block in Atlantic City. So uh, there are five different properties on the block. Um, Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall, Chucktown Barbecue, which you'll learn a lot more about, Rhythm and Spirits, Cuzzy's Pizzeria and Kitchen, and Bar 32. So I do the marketing for all of those. So it's the best job in the world, but they definitely keep my hands full. <laughs> sure. No, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Charlie? Uh, I am the executive chef of Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall and one of the partners uh, in the beer hall. Cool. Yeah. So um, so you mentioned also, and I didn't know that before we started recording, you mentioned that thing about how all these properties on this block yep. are kind of under the same umbrella. Uh, I do think that this is why that there's certain parts of the block that kind of, there's like a clear differentiator between like block to block on certain yeah. parts. Uh, but that's really cool. So uh, how long, like how, uh, what was the process like? You know, it's like specific, yeah. but just kind of like the time frame of what uh, it was like to kind of get this particular block kind of where it is now. That was a very long way to get to the end of that question. I think it probably started eight years ago. The project started maybe almost 10. Um, uh, yep. One of the main developers for the block, Hart Colazzo, hi, dad, um, <laughs> wanted uh, to give Atlantic City a main street. He felt like people came down and, you know, they would spend two nights in the casinos and then they would go home because there was nothing else really to do. So he wanted to give it kind of like, you know, Bourbon Street in New Orleans where you can hop down from bar to bar to bar and uh, there's live music. There's all this stuff going on all the time. Kind of give something really cool for locals. So he's a real estate developer by day. So he kind of, you know, bought the buildings and then found people like Charlie, who's been with us since day one and uh, found people to bring his idea to life and make... Um, Tennessee Ave. So we call ourselves the Orange Loop because Atlantic City, well, Monopoly is based off of Atlantic City. Sure. And Tennessee Ave is one of the orange um, streets. Gotcha. So that's why we are Orange Loop, all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Um, so she mentioned in that answer about like your vision. Can you talk a little bit about like what that was? Like what were you doing before you got involved with this project? Um, so I had a small uh, seafood uh, market and restaurant um, about 20 minutes uh, inland. Um, and uh, originally, uh, they came to me with opening a second location of my uh, seafood restaurant. Um, didn't quite work. It didn't quite work out. I was still kind of new in that business. Um, and then we kind of just pivoted a little bit. Um, they wanted me on the block. I wanted to be on the block. So I partnered uh, with my two partners here at Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall. And uh, we're about four and a half years in now. So I've been a part of this project for almost six years. Yeah, there. And so um, let's talk about like the space right now because we're we're outside in like the what is this? What would you call this? Our beer hall backyard. Beer hall backyard. 
because uh, I've only I've been here one time before yesterday. So last summer I was here once. Uh, that was like my first time coming in because I was looking through like the social media stuff. So kudos to you if that's what you do. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, this place looks sick. And I was like, I got to come like next time I'm down there, which admittedly is not too often outside of like my full time job, which is in title insurance. So nice. me and this real estate developer dad, maybe we should talk. Um, <laughs> But coming down here, you know, like sometimes I would always get kind of caught up. Like if it's a conference, you get stuck in like the casinos, yep. um, you get stuck in like the hotels, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you don't get to explore like what's actually here. So like we just did an episode at Docs right before, nice. which we'll post the week before this one. Um, this afternoon, we're doing one at, at the Claridge tomorrow at Tony's Baltimore Grill. So like places that are actually like in the city yeah. that are cool that people should visit when they're here because there's so much more to do rather than just like pulling on a slot machine or like pretending you know how to play craps yeah exactly you know what i mean exactly um yeah so a little bit about the space yeah for sure yeah i never got to the question about the space <laughs> i'm really crushing it so far <laughs> it's the sun it's beating down on it um my favorite part is the shipping container that we kind of remodeled and made into our is the is it the bar or just the so, beer freezer so our uh keg cooler keg cooler is a converted shipping container we made it into cool a Big ass refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. Right? For all our kegs, we have 40 beers on tap. We have about 80 or so bottles and cans. Um, our taps rotate often, so we have tons of beers. We needed a big space. Yeah. And a shipping container kind of seemed like you know the right way to go. Um, and if you, not that they can see, but if you look at the bar, that orange right there, that's yeah. the outside of the container. And then we threw this overhang on for our outside bar. Yep. Gotcha. Um, and then of course the. The yard, uh, local artists uh, painted all these murals. Um, you know, cool room. It's just a cool, cool little spot. Cool yeah, vibe. our summer stage, and then inside is where we do our open mic night. Um, in the winter, we do our quizzo there. All our beer dinners are in there. Um, there's also a lot of local art inside too. There's art hanging on the walls that yeah. you can buy. Um, I love it in there. <laughs> yeah, no, the inside space is cool. But I just like always have walked by this and been like, man, that's a cool. I like I love all the murals like you were talking about, like with the local artist stuff. Obviously, some of them have clear like monopoly connections. Yes. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much every yeah. one of these along this back wall is has some sort of monopoly theme into it. Like the sure. second one over has all the different uh, game pieces you can play with. Oh, um, uh, uh, Mono oh, yeah, Monopoly Iron. Man yeah. as as like yeah. a young age. Sure, um, Atlantic City. Monopoly kind of theme. You had the diving horse with the Monopoly guy on it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we try to tie, you know, art, music, craft beer, craft food, um, localness. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, bringing in the local artists. There's so many talented local people here. No, I love that. Um, and, yeah, they get to show off their stuff, and yeah. it, it helps make our place look a little cooler. Yeah. So, uh, I do have a question about the local artist stuff, but I uh, just, this was popped into my head as we were talking about kind of the space and developing this particular space. But then obviously now knowing that like the other places on this block mm -hmm. are like part of the same group, like obviously like there must have been a lot of like thought on like what's going to go like well together because like, you don't want to have like a barbecue place and then a barbecue place or like a yeah, pizza place, it, a pizza place. Right. You know, I like, feel like we try to create five unique experiences, right? There's, you know, between the, the five uh, properties on the block, you can get something different, and, and everybody specializes in something else. Yeah. You know, it's craft cocktails at, at Rhythm and Spirits, Bar 32 with the bean to bar chocolate, Cuzzy's Pizza with the great thin crust pizza and sandwiches, Beer Hall, upscale bar food, you know, more beer than you could even, you know, possibly <laughs> imagine, you know? So uh, there's something for everybody on sure. this block, you yeah. know? So if you go out with your girlfriend or wife, she's not a beer drinker. It's okay. She can go down to bar 32 and get a, right. you she know, a killer cocktail. And the, yeah, and the boys hang out here. But you yeah. know, we do get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, women beer drinkers that are into into the craft beer scene. Yeah. And, you know, and if it's not, we still have a great cocktail program here. Um, yeah. So it's kind of cool that all the places are so different. But when you're like, when you walk into them, you kind of feel like a similar like I don't want to say aura in the yeah. room. But like everybody's yeah. got like. 
their big personalities. Everybody's got their own expertise. Um, everybody's got their own whatever. So like, no matter where you go, you kind of like, kind of know you're on 10 Ave. And when yeah. people find out we're under the same ownership, they're like, oh, that makes so much sense, blah, blah, blah. Sure. So it's kind of cool to have. I always just say we're one big happy family down here. And I'm like, you don't know the half of it. Yeah. Half of us are actually big, related. <laughs> yeah. Big, happy, dysfunctional, dysfunctional. family. <laughs> yes. But we actually function very well. But, yeah. you know, and, and that family thing we have. Happy our, 80% you know, of the time. Yeah, have our moments, you know, like any family does. But, yep. Yeah. Um, just a great group of people on this block in, in general. Yeah. You know, you know everybody yeah. doing their thing. I also like to, like, we were, so we were talking about the local artist stuff. And I think. Um, like the episode that I just recorded at Docs, like one of the things that we were talking about, because obviously that's been there since 1897 or whatever. Um, and Frank and I were talking about just kind of like when all the casinos came in and like the relationship between like the casinos and then like the local places. Yeah. And kind of like how that happened. And then like everything kind of just went to shit, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, but like I, I do think it's really interesting to like, because there's so much cool stuff like within like the communities of Atlantic City to like do what you guys are doing and like develop a community basically like right here like on this block mm-hmm. and then like engage with local artists and getting stuff on the walls like to me I mean the show is all about New Jersey and like doing stuff with people that are here <coughs> is really important and I like that whole vibe like taking a block making it like its own little thing yep um, just kind of in like the grand scheme of all the stuff that's happening around Atlantic City and try to get it like moving forward yes uh, yeah and for an Atlantic way. City to grow it, it needs to be more than just the casinos and yeah. I and I think a lot of the casinos are starting to recognize that yeah and partnering with some of the local businesses and and stuff uh, especially here in this like North Beach area with yeah. Ocean Steel Pier Hard Rock Resorts us um, on the on the block um, collaborations and, and different things like that so um, it's nice to see that the casinos are starting to realize that it just takes more than slot machines to make this, yeah. you know, a successful, yeah. you know, community. Right. They need you know? them and they need us. Exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So let's dive into like the beer hall a little bit more specifically. So mm-hmm. there's 40 beers on tap. Correct. Right. Yes. Um, and so talk to me about like, I mean, is there like a, a mindset when you're, cause obviously like you have like your standards, you know, like there's whatever the, uh, it's on the menu. I think it's called like the cheap stuff. Is that what that is? Yeah. So that would <laughs> yeah. be like the Miller Lite, Bud Light. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, yeah. On, uh, that's on the on the menu. But then you have like so many cool from like a lot of different places, which I think is cool too. Like, how do you go about sourcing those or like figuring out like which ones are going to go on that menu? So uh, my partner Scott is the resident like beer geek. You know, he's into it and, you know, he puts a, a lot of research. We work with a bunch of different uh, vendors, craft beer vendors. Um, you know, we have about out of the 40 taps, there's somewhere around 10 that pretty much stay, stay on. Um, and then everything else rotates a lot of seasonality in the summer. You'll have more ciders and sours in the winter. You know, it's more, you know, um, um, uh, what the hell are they called? Like porters, porters and stouts, and yeah, yeah, yeah. a little, a little, like a little darker, a little orange. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I couldn't think of stout. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know where my head's at, but um, it's okay. It's maybe because it's, it's not fun. stout season. It's true, you know? it's true. You're um, right. ooh, stout season. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Every once it gets cold, for me. yeah. Well, like not once it starts wise, to get into like in the, like, <laughs> in the <laughs> you know, if I keep drinking beer, I'm headed towards stout season. Yeah, but. uh yeah, once it gets a little cooler, like, you know, I look at it, it's stout season. We'll start yeah. to get a little heavier, a little darker beers, and, you know, they're they're so good, and they've come some, you know, such a long way. Sure. So, so many unique flavors and combinations, and the barrel aged, and, you know, there's so much cool shit out there. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's really fun. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I like, I mean, because, uh, what do you have there? This actually is a Miller Lite. I, yeah, All so right, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it light. I was gonna do. I was gonna do something a little heavier, but I changed my mind because it, no, you smart. know, I got a long day today. And, yeah, you know, I'm probably right. it's, can it's consume a few of these, and and it'd still be good to go. Right, and when it's this hot, like you don't even know what's happening. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it's cool. Like, there's like a lot of uh, New Jersey based breweries that are on there, which yep. obviously like we like because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like and stuff like that. And then that's that was one of the big reasons why like I wanted to come check it out and all that kind of stuff because of like a lot of its connections, obviously to the city itself, but then you know just like New Jersey as a whole and making yeah. sure like that's like another yeah thing too. So one of our stables, we do have the uh, Atlantic City Diving Horse. Mm-hmm. Um, IPA, which is fantastic, and it's brewed right here in Atlantic City. 
Um, the seed just opened and, you know, we'll rotate their beers through They, you know, they're an amazing brewery, especially for being, you know, like a year, year and a half old. They just came out of the gate and started killing it. Yeah. They have um, hands too. Yeah. You know, and I had that last night and it was really good. So it's, it's good. A lot of like Hamilton and, you know, uh, Vineland area beer, you know, there's so many good breweries like Icarus up in like. Uh, Lakewood yeah. and, and, you know, just so many cool, good beers that come from New Jersey. And, you know, we try and highlight as many of them as we can. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I do want to talk about the menu, but just okay. given like the time that we're at, I'm going to save that for segment two. Okay. Um, just because I don't want to like get into the weeds of it and then have to like cut you off. Yeah. That would be really shitty. See you on segment two, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about food, but uh, I do want to talk about like the logo. So I think honestly, when I first found you guys on Instagram last year, I guess it was, I was like, oh shit, that's a cool logo. Mm. Um, I'm assuming, and I'm probably right, just given all the stuff that we talked about, that it's like monopoly based. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a variation on uh, the Monopoly guy. Yeah. It can't be too close because obviously he's trademarked and, sure. you know, uh, so if you're listening to Monopoly, it's totally it's different. Not, and yeah, and yeah we were just joking. But, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so loosely based on that, you know, to tie in the whole Atlantic City and Monopoly theme. And, yeah. And yeah. That's cool. No, I love it. I just think it's like everything about this place, like the little details, like on everything, I think is really well done. Um, and I think like, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to, um, and I'm sure like going through it, you guys may know or would know, like being able to do something new and cool, but then also try to like tie it back into like the roots of what makes this whole city cool. Exactly. Yes. You know what I mean? And I yep. feel like that's like the real thing. And that's why like there's certain places that here, like down in this area that I really like because they do that. Yep. You know, yeah. I think that sometimes it gets lost a little bit. Sometimes things are like either too stuck in the past or too modern that they don't kind of like bring it all Doesn't together. Matter. It's more for Vegas, sure. Than yeah, yeah, and no, I, but I think like a lot of the stuff that you guys do here um, kind of hits that, and I think that that's really cool. So there's my two cents. We go, Perfect. Charlie. Yeah, yeah. great job. Bam. Bam. Good Bam. job all around. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna take our break. All right. Uh, so we'll be back. We'll talk about the menu. We'll talk a little bit more about Chuck Town because I really dig that shirt. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll. Talk more all about that. So this is the Greenish Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We're here in Atlantic City at the Tennessee Ave Beer Hall with Sarah Colazzo and Charlie Sorith. We'll be right back. We are right. Voted one of the top 100 jazz clubs in the world, Shanghai Jazz in Madison, New Jersey, has been entertaining its customers for almost 30 years with world-class live music, great food, and a commitment to hospitality that creates an exceptional atmosphere. Plus, if you're in the mood for a creative cocktail and incredible vibe, be sure to check out Encore Speakeasy located downstairs in Shanghai Jazz. As one of my favorite restaurants in the area, I personally guarantee you will have a great experience. Check out the music schedule, the menu, or to make a reservation, head to shanghaijazz.com. The Mayo Performing Arts Center is the heart of arts and entertainment in Morristown, New Jersey. MPAC presents over 200 events annually and is home to an innovative children's arts education program. To see MPAC's upcoming schedule of world-class concerts, stand-up comedy, family shows, and more, head to mayoarts.org or just click the link in our show notes. Bored of going to the same park? Want to try a new local adventure? Well, then check out njspots.com, your home for finding a new spot to discover right here in New Jersey. With dozens of maps to check out, local hiking spots, family-friendly places, and seasonal suggestions, NJ Spots is waiting for you to find somewhere new to explore. That's njspots.com. All right, we're back for segment two of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Cam. We're here in Atlantic City, New Jersey at Tennessee Ave Beer Hall with Sarah Klotz and Charlie Soreth. So first segment, we'll learn kind of the history, so to speak, okay. of uh, you guys and this block and all the things that are going on, uh, which I think is really cool. And I, I love everything about this place. I think is is really spot on, like I said, at the close of the first segment. <clears throat> but one of the things, because you are, what, what's your like actual title? Uh, slave. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so uh, chef and partner of Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall and Chuck Town. Cool. Keep so... Slave, chef, partner. Yeah, uh, so I do it all. Yeah, so, but as chef, you obviously, like, put together the menus. Yes. Right? So take us through kind of, like, maybe broad strokes, and then we'll get a little bit more nuance to it. But when you were putting this particular menu together, what was kind of going through? Like, what did you want to shine through to kind of tie into the concept here? So uh, being that, you know, beer hall, we have great beers. Um, food that goes with beer. Right. Um, you know, so 
I would say we're like upscale, a little bit more refined bar food, right? Something like you mentioned the lobster tots earlier, right? Yeah. Tater tots, lobster bisque, main lobster. You know, it's fun, it's approachable. Everybody loves tater tots, right? Um, burgers, you know, I, we have some pretty great burgers, um, wings, uh, all, all things you would, you know, when you go out to eat and want to drink some beers and hang out, like all things that you would get, huge, you know, pretzel bigger than your face, you know, yeah. uh, stuff like that. So we wanted to keep it familiar with people, but kind of put our own own twist on it. Yeah. Push it a little you know? bit. Yeah. yeah, push the boundaries a little bit on on certain items. And um, as as we've gone throughout the, you know, the last four and a half years, I feel like a lot of our guests kind of trust us now that if I put something on that's a little more, you know, like right now we have a tuna uh, poke bowl, right? Like when we first opened, you know, they might be like, oh, am I really going to eat, you know, tuna in this place? And then they sure. start to eat some of the food and they come back and they see the quality, the consistency, you know, the care by my staff that's put in to every single dish that goes out. Now, you know, they'll, you know, they'll experiment a little bit more. You know, we do off the wall specials. They'll do, you know, like, oh, that sounds interesting. And, you know, they trust us that it's going to be, you know, what they're expecting. Yeah. You know? So, uh, so prior to this, you said you had a seafood spot like 20 minutes inland. Yes. Uh, were you always doing stuff in food? I've been in the restaurant industry for 28 years. How's that possible? You're only 25. I know, right? <laughs> Pretty good, right? You know, yeah, I've been, you know, sautéing in the womb. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, listen, I started out uh, as a dishwasher. I was a dishwasher, a busboy, a server, you know, prep cook, line cook, chef, you know, worked in hotels, private restaurants. So I've kind of been around the block, gained a lot of experience. Yeah. You know, as a, as a young cook and chef, I asked a lot of questions. I showed up early. I stayed late. I did, you know, because I wanted to learn. I, you know, I wanted to get better. Yeah. And then, obviously, I, I feel like a lot of passionate, you know, cooks or chefs, their dream is to one day open their own place. Um, and, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, you know, have one that I sold to come here and then, you know, partner with my partners to, you know, open up what I think is a really, really cool spot. Yeah. You know? So just a quick question. Uh, if all this, all these restaurants are like under the same umbrella, are you doing the stuff for all the spots or just here? I just do. Um, so I'm partners in this and Chucktown. Okay. And then uh, one of my partners, her or her father uh, is partners in all of them. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So um, let's talk a little bit about Chucktown. Okay. Uh, because I saw that on the QR menu and it was like, interesting. And I just had, admittedly, I would have tried it, but I had just had like a whole brisket tray. I was like driving from a winery to here. Nice. And I passed like this little roadside metal shed that these guys like had put up. It was like very, very low key. Very <laughs> low key. It was in Salem County. So just like very random spot. Yeah. Um, and it was just like two guys with like a big smoker and like, you know, a couple things like they only took cash, like that kind of place. Um, and obviously like, that's like, you know, like when you think barbecue, yeah. like roadside, like that's, that's yeah. exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. what you, um, what you would think. So then yeah, I was totally. going to the Chuck menu. So I did not get that. I kept it seafood related. So last night I got the lobster tots. Today I got the lobster roll. Okay. Oh, um, nice. But uh, lobster. yeah, well, you know, I feel like when you're by the the sea, you brought, right, and that and that's seafood. part of the reason why we have a few, you know, a few nice seafood dishes on there yeah. because especially when people come from out of town and they go, you know, they go down the shore, or, you know, whatever, they're thinking seafood, they're thinking fish, yeah. they're thinking crab cakes, yeah, they're thinking you know, whether it's clams or lobster or whatever, yeah, you it's know, right, a little yeah, bit like of a the exactly, you it's know a little, I mean? yeah, it, it's just a natural fit, yeah, definitely. Um, so Chucktown. Let's get back to that. So okay. talk to me a little bit about Chucktown um, and what started that, kind of how that process went, um, and then kind of how it relates to Tennessee M. So um, I've always been a fan of barbecue, like doing it at my house, like, you know, on the occasional days off that I would get as a, as a chef, um, you know, smoking stuff in the backyard, pork, brisket, you know, pork belly, ribs, all, all that, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and then I really kind of fell in love with about four years or so ago. Uh, I was in Charleston, South Carolina, um, which the nickname for Charleston is Chuck Town, right? My name is Charles. When I was a kid, uh, they called me Chuck because my father was Charles too. So uh, Chuck Town Barbecue seemed like a natural fit. Yeah. Um, it's based, you know, 
our barbecue is kind of based off of uh, Carolina barbecue. Um, four main spots for for barbecue: Carolinas, um, you know, St. Louis, Memphis, and and Texas. Yeah, um, all fantastic. All, you know, different nuances in their cuisine, difference in the sauces, and you know the the way they do their barbecue. Um, but so you know, we do ours based off of of Carolina. Yeah. So. No, that's cool. And as a big barbecue fan, we've had two barbecue places on the show so far. And like I do, I'm a backyard barbecue guy myself. Yeah. Like I have like a little pit barrel. And then like we do like some, I've done a couple like barbecue competitions, which are always fun. Nice. Uh, we actually did like a smoked, we won a category with like a smoked Taylor ham, egg and cheese. Oh, nice. Which was pork girl roll. Pork roll. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. But anyway. <laughs> fuck, fuck you guys. <laughs> Uh, but my girlfriend's like, a, she went to culinary school, like was a chef, like all that kind of stuff. And nice. she's like, what about this? And I was like, holy shit, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, and that like crushed it. But uh, but that's why I think it's so cool because it's like, uh, like you talked about having like a seafood place and like being down the, down the shore, it's like seafood, seafood. Like most people kind of go that real. Yeah. But then to do something like that, I think it's really cool too because it kind of ties into something that you're passionate about and kind of yeah. takes it to like and another kind of. And it also kind of, you know, it's like an offshoot of of here at the beer hall, um, and it just kind of fits with yeah. the with the beer and the block and the you know, you know, good bourbon cocktails like eating some brisket and you know having like a, a smoked old fashioned or some you know some it just yeah you know kind of works yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, um, so yeah we went that uh, went that route and. Um, Carolina barbecue is just so good. Like it's ridiculous. You know, yeah. a couple spots down there. Um, I actually was just, uh, took a trip to Charlotte, uh, North Carolina a month ago, um, see dead and company. And, you know, we hit up barbecue while we were there because it's Carolina. Well, it's yeah, yeah. It's a little slightly different than, than South Carolina and like Charleston style, but equally, equally is great. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just awesome. And it's fun. You yeah, know, absolutely. Keeps me, yeah, it keeps me occupied. We have our set menu that we're uh, going to be growing in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, each week, like, I'll take a different cut of meat and, you know, and do something fun with that. Like, today, uh, the, way, the, the rain and, you know, the shitty weather in the morning kind of, like, held us back a little bit. Um, we're doing a uh, brown sugar, black pepper crusted uh, pork belly. Cool. That should be going in the smoker shortly. Um and then on Mondays, we're kind of doing, you know, Chuck Town takes on Mexican where, you know, we're going to smoke meats. I'm going to use, you know, authentic like Mexican flavors and, you know, change that menu chalkboard style, you know, do tacos, do, yeah. you know, brisket tacos, cool. pulled pork nachos, you know, different things like that. Kind of kind of fun, kind of unique. And, yeah. you know, we get to explore, you know, more and more flavors and, you know, and, and things. Yeah, so. absolutely. Did you have a question? For Charlie, as we were going through this, I don't want to leave you out. Oh no, you're, you're just getting like totally stonewalled. Yeah, I am mesmerized by all everything Chuck Town is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of funny just because, I mean, I met you probably what five years ago when all of this started, and I've been calling you Chuck Town ever since. And I feel like I went to college in Rhode Island, and I came home one summer, and it's just like, oh, Chuck Town's a thing now. There's a smoker in the back. There's a this. There's a that. And I'm like, oh, like it really. When he says it fell into place, like it literally was just like. Why haven't we, we, this is like the perfect time to start doing this. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually thought about it a few years ago, but then, you know, the world closed down with COVID yeah, and, yeah. you know, when we, when we reopened and people were actually finally, you know, allowed to go out and do stuff again, it was just so mobbed and I didn't feel like it was the right time, you know? And then we spent a little time, did a little more research, you know, I kind of try to perfect more and more of the barbecue and, you know, this summer, um, seemed like the perfect time to, all right, now we're ready. Yeah. We're, you know, we're ready. We're going to do it right. And, you know, it kind of, it kind of did just fall into place. It's no, kind of no, fun right. getting to watch you like play around with everything. Cause like the beer hall menu, we change it up. We have our, some staples that I love that have been there from the beginning, but like, it's kind of fun seeing you in like your totally new barbecue element where it's like, I'm just going to do the craziest shit I can come up with and yeah. people are going to like it because it's barbecue and I'm going to throw it in the smoker and we're going to see how it comes out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and. Because you really don't it's, know. When you put something in a smoker, you don't know yeah. for until like exactly. two hours later you know, how it's going to go. It's fun because I get to do something different, play around with new flavors and, and things like that. And, you know, like one week I might just do like, all right, I'm going to do, you know, like a Japanese, 
you know, smoked whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we can do whatever we want and just, you know, play around with flavors and styles and, and cuisines. And, you know, the end result, when it comes out and it's well, you know, done well. And, you know, it's just great for, for the guests. Like, yeah. holy shit, I didn't think I was going to go to the beer hall and have, like, this crazy, like, you know, smoked ribs tossed in mole and, you know, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's something unexpected and they get it and they're like, wow, that, you know, that's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know? for sure. And so you mentioned something there and I think just it's important for people to kind of know that like if you're here, you can get Chucktown. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But it's on certain days, right? Yeah. So right now we do uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and uh, coming this week, we're going to add Mondays where, you know, we scrap the regular you know, barbecue and then and take it Mexico. Cool. So, right. so we're open yeah. from 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. or we sell out. Or we sell out. Or we yeah. sell out. And there's, sell out the there's been days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's been days where it's like 4, 30, 5 o'clock. And I'm like, hey, guys, Sorry. you know, yeah. you guys sold a ton of barbecue. Thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so get here early. Yeah. You sure. know, I mean. Uh, we're not quite at the 8 a.m. lineup out the door for barbecue. Hopefully, you know, one day people will be like, Chucktown is that good that we're going to get there. Uh, we're going to get there Happy early. Birthday, oh, it's Marcus. a birthday. Marcus. Happy birthday, Marcus. Oh, man, I love that everyone's having like a really good time out here. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. It's a beautiful we day. It's, if we, if we shift it, yeah, we shoot them back and forth for That's 20 minutes yeah. trying to figure it out. Yeah. Well, when Marcus listens, he'll know yeah, that he'll we're know. thinking exactly. about it. You know, yeah. we're, we're thinking about you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to Marcus. Um, Chuck just got moved back. Yeah, that's right. So uh, yeah, trending. I also just want to kick it back here as we're getting kind of like not right at the end of this episode, but getting closer. Um, so you have forty beers on tap, but then there's also like a whole other beer cocktail menu, right? Correct. The yeah. awesome uh, craft cocktail program, and then we have a hundred bottles and cans. Yeah. Um, and those are super super hot this summer. Um, normally, I think for the past couple of years, it's been like crazy amount of drafts when people are blowing through cans, which is cool because then the faster they go, the faster we can bring other stuff in. And stuff, there are so yeah. many, so many yeah, small brands are, coming cans through. Cans are like really popular right now, yeah. you know, and satin, you know, it's it's not like a regular old can. Like they're doing cool art. They're yeah. making the cans look good. They stand out. And it's like, oh, what is that? Like, oh, let me try this. Like, you know, yeah. it looks really cool. Yep. Let's, you know. Let's hope it tastes good. Yeah. You know, and right. a lot of times they, you know, they back it up, but they, you know, the cool artwork and stuff. Like, yeah, absolutely. Helps draw you in. And, yeah. You know. And then the cocktail side too. There's like a slushy machine in there. There's like all sorts of stuff. Going yep. On. We got our two frozen yep. drinks. We got, we always got jello shots on hand. Um, we, uh, who's it? Dominica and Lee that do the cocktail program? Uh, Dominica and Alex. Dominica and Alex. Uh, uh, the yeah. Program. Seasonal cocktails, um, fresh juices, fresh fruit, all, you know, all homemade, you know, I help them with their syrups and things like that. And, you know, they get ideas in their head and, hey, let's mess around with it. And, you know, and they try it, they perfect it, they tweak it, this and that. And then, then it goes on the menu. Yeah. You know, that's really cool. Um, so then, like, obviously, like, the, a lot has happened in the last eight years, I guess you had said. Like, that was like, as this process started. I would say from abandoned buildings eight, when it was don't walk down yeah. Tennessee Avenue because it is a dangerous yeah. block, don't go, right. to now. Yeah. Now, elderly it, women walking down yeah. with their I grandchildren mean, hanging out. Absolutely. Just watching, you know, the transformation over the last, you know, six, seven, eight years. It's amazing. Like, Friday and Saturday nights, you'll see Mercedes, Tesla, like, all these great cars, you know, nice people, you know, just coming in, hanging out, having a good time. And eight years ago, there was none of that. Yeah. You know, you there hear was the music from the boardwalk when you're walking down. It was like, ooh, what's that? With special yeah, yeah, way of our live band. You know, and it's really this block and, you know, a couple of blocks now, you know, behind us and, and over there on New York Avenue. They're all doing great things and similar things. And you could see a lot of like minded investors coming in this city and, and just really, you know, being a part of the transformation and, you know, trying to make this uh, this town great. Yeah, because there's like so many places where it's like, like I was mentioning earlier in this episode, it's just like Atlantic City to me is like so do, yes. you know? And it's like, there's certain places that I think, and I was mentioning this in, the, in our episode from last week, like, um, so like there's certain places and I feel like what you guys are doing here is a product or a, uh, a catalyst of this is like, pushing like the community side of Atlantic City yes. like forward 
yep. so that everything else kind of follows through and then like the city as a whole can thrive because I obviously like that was a thing that didn't really happen at the beginning yeah. right and it kind of drove a lot of local businesses out but that's really what makes a city a town uh, exactly. a shore town where people are kind of I mean granted Atlantic City is a little bit different than every not a little it's a lot different <laughs> every other shore town that exists yeah. in New Jersey but just kind of like as it works it just needs a local part of it too and yeah. there's plenty of that but there just needs to be like a little bit more of a robustness to it. Exactly. And, you know, there's great entertainment. There's great dining. You know, the boardwalk. There's the arcades. You know, they just did the the big indoor water park. Yeah, yeah. You know, things like that. So there's more for people to do. If you don't gamble, there's no reason to come to Atlantic City. You can go to the beach somewhere else. Yeah. You I know, and now that. Quite a bit. Yeah. And, you know. Now there's something for the family when you come down for a weekend. They can ride go-karts. They can go to the beach. They can go eat, you know, see entertainment. You know, there's always, you know, great acts, local acts in town, um, you know, big national headliners, things like that. So, you know, there's definitely a lot more. The city's headed in the right direction. You know, it's still got a little ways to go. But, you know, if everybody just keeps pushing for that for that positive change, it, it's going to come. Awesome. No, I love that. And I could not agree more. Um so guys, I really appreciate you having me here in your space and chatting with me. Yeah, absolutely. All that kind of stuff. Like I always have a good time when I'm here. And I was like, this is a little bit different because I technically am working. <laughs> um, but it was just cool to like get to know kind of how this whole thing kind of runs. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for having us on. This was fun. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? So uh, if people want to learn more um, about this place, Chucktown, all that kind of stuff, like where can they go? You can go to our uh, website, TennesseeAvenueBeerHall.com, our Instagram, 10 Ave Beer Hall or Chucktown Barbecue. We're also on Facebook, um, uh, and we have a 10 com website as well that has yeah, all Which kind of builds into the whole block. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then if people are coming down here and they want to come check it out, uh, do you have any recommendations for them? I was like reservations, I feel like it aren't really like a thing. We don't do any reservations here. Kind of a first come, first serve basis. If you want to come with like a large, if there's 20 of you coming to celebrate a birthday, yeah. um, absolutely reach out to um, all the emails on our Instagram or like questionnaires on the website, um, and we'll you know hook you up with one of those. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just like a. <laughs> it's, we wanted to feel. We call it the beer hall backyard instead of like the the yard or the whatever because we want you feel like you're in your best friend's backyard yeah, and you're just sure. all yeah. hanging out drinking beers out of plastic cups just eating you know probably better yeah, food than your friend makes yeah you yeah. know things like that we had you know the games and you know just a fun cool hangout spot yeah. you know um, but then menu recommendations I think they can take care of that when they look at the menu because there's like little red houses and there's like yeah some of the things that kind of stand out to show like hey this yeah is like our house specialties and yeah. things like that you'll see like the little red uh houses like you would find on the monopoly board of course um but yeah all fresh all you know made in house uh we love to cook we love to have fun and you know there's something for everybody I also feel like you know yeah so Anything with kimchi, you can't go wrong. Kimchi oh, is See, that's a good recommendation. Hit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Our, our, our Kentucky our Avenue chicken. Kentucky Avenue chicken. Yep. So that's it's kind of, yeah, it's like a, an, a cross between like Southern and like Eastern, like Asian, you know, flavor, um, buttermilk and togarashi spiced chicken, um, dredged, fried, topped with kimchi, sweet chili aioli, um, yeah, it's turned out to be one of our one of our home run uh, home run dishes. Awesome, so awesome. Yeah. Well, so we'll put the websites, the social handles in the show notes. People can just go yep. click it, check it out, um, and then obviously, like if you're in Atlantic City, just come down to Tennessee F. Right, right between <laughs> resorts and Claridge. That's right, go. Atlanta City's most exciting street, That's most right. exciting beach block. Yeah. Yes, it says right. it on a billboard, so it must be true. That's, That's true, right? Yeah. yeah, on the internet too. All over the internet. Oh, well, All over the internet. Take it to the bank. <laughs> um, but uh, but this was so great. Again, I appreciate you guys having me out, uh, chatting with me you. for a little bit, uh, just taking the time, because obviously I know you're both busy, you know, all that kind of stuff. But those links and show notes, or uh, links and social handles will be in the show notes, along with greetings from the garden state.com. If you want to check out the show, uh, more episodes, uh, our little tour here in Atlantic City, and all the other ones that we posted over the last couple of years. So, uh, this has been the Greetings from the Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Cam. We were here in Atlantic City, New Jersey today at the Tennessee Ave Beer Hall with Sarah Klotz and with Charlie Sora. Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you.